Hey YouTube, I'm going to show you how to replace the rear window regulator motor on a Suburban or a Blazer. Anyways, this is the rear tailgate. I'm going to take you inside and show you a couple of the panels that are going to come off. Now this is the inside and the regulator has already been removed. You're going to need to take off the outer cover, which is this one here you can see and then the inner panel which is probably 25 screws to get it off so those come off first this one just kind of hooks on the top you take the screws out and then lift it off and I'm gonna crawl back in here and show you what it looks like with the regulator removed Okay, the regulator and the regulator motor are attached by four screws back in here. Just four simple screws. And this is the pigtail that hooks up to the original motor. And if you get a replacement motor, oftentimes it'll come with a pigtail because the motors have changed, the connectors have changed. And uh, next, what? we're going to do is go into the shop and I'm going to show you a layout on some of the things that are involved. Okay, we're in the shop. Here are a couple of regulators with motors in them. Now the mistake that I made when I started this job was that I removed the motor first without locking this gear in. And the suggested way, the proper way to do it, is to go ahead and drill. Once you get it out, it'll come out just like this one here. And you can remove it all in one piece, leave the motor intact. And then what you want to do is take a center punch and a hammer and center punch it any place along here, preferably here, and drill it out with like a quarter inch drill bit. And then what you're going to do is you're going to put a a bolt and a nut through here and you're going to tighten that down and you're going to lock it down because what that does is it fixes these gears in their position they're perfectly positioned from the factory and when this is locked in it'll keep this from snapping back this is like a huge mouse trap it's got a spring on the back side so it's constantly under load and when the window is in its up position, the spring is totally relaxed. When it's in its down position, that's when it's fully under load. So with this locked in, with the nut and bolt through there tight, tightened, then you can extract these three bolts and you won't have to worry about the regulator snapping back on you and then losing your position. That's what I did and it caused it to be a nightmare of a repair. <clears throat> so once that's done, you can take these out and put your new motor in. Now what you can anticipate when you get your new motor is that it should come with a pigtail like this. Now this pigtail goes into the motor just fine. Um, on this one, the connector didn't go into my loom properly, so I had to remove the connector and just plug the leads in, which sucked a little bit. And uh, while we're at it, I want to address a couple of other things. When you pull these regulators out and they're old, these rollers are going to be worn. Often they're going to be worn. This one is still intact, but it's worn. And this one, the nylon's completely gone. So I'm going to flip this one over and show you what you want to do is you want to take a grinder like this, like a four inch grinder. This one has a wire wheel on it, but you can take any kind of a grinder and you grind the back off completely on both of them. And then take a center punch and a hammer and knock them out. <clears throat> and I went into LMC Magazine and they sell those roller sets for $5 plus shipping. So it's a really good deal. 
Then once you get your old rollers out, I took mine to a shop that does clutch and brake work. So they're capable of doing crimping, rivets, and other things like that. I took my old regulator and the, the rollers and um, took them to this clutch and brake shop and they installed the, the new ones. So that was a real affordable fix and they did a really nice roll job on the back side. When they come from the factory, they use a different rivet and it's, it's just a compression that they do. So you're gonna wanna replace those rollers if you can and it's not that expensive. Okay, so that's, that's a little bit about removing and replacing the motor. You don't wanna take the motor out until you lock this in, drill that out, put a bolt in, lock it tight, and then you can extract the motor and put your new motor in. And like I say, you're probably gonna have to, it'll, it should come with a pigtail, a new pigtail. This is LMC Magazine. They have a lot of the parts, all of the parts uh, for the Suburbans and the Blazers. Um, another thing you're gonna wanna do if you do this job, especially on the older vehicles, is these window guides here. And, you know, when they get old, the, the weather stripping in there rots out. And they want about $100 each side for those, those guides. So what I did was I took my window guides out. I used a wire brush like this and cleaned out all of the old weather stripping on the inside. And then I went online and I purchased some new weather stripping. This is 9 16 by 9 16 outside diameter. And the width and the height is 9 16 I then took a jigs or a skill saw, I'm sorry, a hacksaw and I cut the sections for the window guides to length and then with those with those guides clean I took 3M weather stripping the yellow super glue weather stripping and put it inside of the window guides and I used a toothbrush like this to apply it so I applied it generously and then I firmly put in the weather stripping. And when they put the weather stripping in from the factory, they actually rivet the weather stripping in through the channels and onto the bracket that holds the, the, the window guides. <clears throat> well, in this case, I used some self-tapping stainless steel screws and a, a drill with a small bit on it to drill a pilot hole. And then I went back in with the, the stainless steel screws and you could go smaller than this and screw through the weather stripping into the channel, into the steel itself. And that'll affix, in addition to the adhesive, it will affix the new weather stripping in there. And you're gonna be getting rain down in through there. So you wanna go with stainless because they'll be exposed to moisture and water. And um, that's pretty much it for now. Um, this whole assembly slides back inside the door through one side or the other, then you bolt it up. There's one, two, three, and another bolt up here, four bolts. And uh, give that a try, that should help. Um, Otherwise, if you did what I did, um, and you take the motor out, then you'll lose the position on these arms. And then it becomes a nightmare trying to figure out where that position is unless you mark it before you take it apart. But this is the best way because this arm is under a lot of spring tension and you don't wanna to have to deal with it. It snaps back like a huge mouse trap. So um, good luck with your repairs. Thanks for watching.